Hey guys, welcome to episode zero of Behind the Cosplay. I wanted to throw this intro on here really quick just to make sure you guys know that this is what, what you're about to hear is sort of a prototype version. It was a test version that Dakota and I did to make me be able to see how the questions flow, how how long it would take to do one of these podcasts. It was for me to learn a lot about how this would work before I actually interviewed another person. So you might not even know what Behind the Cosplay is yet. I'm going to introduce that when we get into the video. But basically, there's sort of like interviews with cosplayers, YouTubers, people who run conventions, things like that. So This one is really weird, and I just want to really make sure that I stress that this isn't what every episode is like. Uh, I had Dakota come in, and he interviewed me, asking me a large amount of the questions that I ask other people when I talk to them uh, for the show. So this was really just supposed to be a test, but I still wanted to post it up for you guys because I feel like it delved deep into some interesting things about Dakota and I and about convention reviews and its conception and how we came up that longtime fans of the channel might be interested in. So I'm putting this video up before the official launch of the channel. So this is going up. You should be seeing it Thursday before Anime Midwest, the day before I leave. The official relaunch of the channel is next Monday. The official launch of Behind the Cosplay is... Not that next Friday, because there'll still be vlogs coming out, but the next Friday. So there's still a good two weeks before you'll hear the first episode. And I want to let you know I've already recorded like four of these. The flow is great. Things are great. I'm loving this show. This is probably my new favorite show on this channel. Uh, So I hope you guys enjoy it. Give me your feedback. Let me know what kind of questions you want to hear me asking people. Let me know just what what you think of this. And like I said, this is a little bit different because it's Dakota interviewing me. Normally, I'm interviewing other people. And, of course, Dakota and I know each other, so we kind of go off topic and talk about our own stuff a little bit. But uh, I think you guys would enjoy it. That's why I'm, I'm posting it. And I do want to apologize if the audio is not amazing on this episode. Like I said, it was our first test run. We hadn't podcasted in a while so we we had the mic up, but we were kind of forgetting to always be close enough to it and all that stuff. So hopefully you can forgive me for that. But like I said, that's why this is episode zero. It's not considered part of the actual uh, season one. This is kind of like the pilot, like the pilot episode that we would pitch to a studio back in the day if we were trying to get a show made. Uh, So I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll stop rambling, and let's just get into it, because I give you a whole other intro once we get in. I just really wanted to make sure you guys understand what this is, and that episode one, the real episode one of this, will be out in two weeks. Please keep your eyes open for it, because very, very excited about this one. Hello guys and welcome to episode zero of Behind the Cosplay. I'm your host, well, I will be your host, I'm not going to be your host today, we'll get to that, Cody Bennett, and this is your weekly show where I talk to somebody interesting from the cosplay convention community. This could be a cosplayer, a convention YouTuber, someone who runs conventions maybe, that would be cool, or even just someone who's been in the community for a long time and has a lot to share. Remember that this is a conversational interview that goes live every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Convention Reviews YouTube channel and SoundCloud coming soon to iTunes. So I just want to talk a little bit before we get into this about why I'm making this show and kind of what it is. Uh, This is being made because I made that video asking you guys about what you would like me to do on the channel. And a lot of people said they wanted me to talk to cosplayers while I while in the vlogs like while I was at cons and cut that into the vlogs to see what like they have to say unfortunately that is a that will break the the flow of the vlog that won't make any sense at all 
in in a vlog but i'm like a lot of people said that though so i'm like i gotta figure something out with this a lot of people want me to talk to people so i decided to make this show so this show is basically going to be me talking to people like i said earlier and kind of learning about the point is kind of to learn about who they are as a person and where they came from not necessarily exactly what they're doing now like yeah they might be doing youtube or they might be cosplaying but i want to know what got them to that point and then we'll get into that we'll get into their cosplay or their youtube or whatever but i, I want to kind of know how they got to that point uh this week the person being interviewed is me weird i know but don't worry i'm not going to interview myself because that would be weird i'm actually here with acr crew member dakota or mr director what's up oh <laughs> You going to come in now. Yeah, you can you talk now. You can talk. You were done with this little thing. Hey, how's everybody doing? It's been a minute since you've seen me. I'm not dead. Yeah, he's alive. Very uh, much alive. He's not going to be on every episode of this. But I, I like I like to think I'll be on a, on a few interviewing spots. Well, I was going to say, if, uh, if you guys like Dakota's energy on this and you want him to help me interview people ever, let me know. That won't happen every time because I need to be able to like, just do this whenever the time is right, but... Maybe he'll be back sometime. And, and I'm still kind of working on my own thing. It's I'm been busy as all as heck and tired when I get home from my other job, so it's been really hard. But I do plan on getting my own thing going again. Little shameless plug myself there. Well, we'll I'll update people whenever that happens. But uh, yeah, do let us know after this after this if you uh like Dakota's Dakota on this type of show, and maybe we can get him in to help me interview other people in the future. But this episode is going to be a little weird. To kick things off, I thought I'd have Dakota interview me, like I said earlier, uh, so we can get an idea of how this show's going to flow. This is episode zero, like I said, not the real episode one, since episode one should really be like, you know, somebody cool. This is just me. And uh, nobody's not... <laughs> I can't even, I got tongue tied and can't even, can't even burn you. You're making a great case for why we should bring uh, back. Everybody, <laughs> you want me on here? You get so much stuttering. Uh, since, since I only make cosplay videos and I don't cosplay myself, the questions are going to be based around making videos and like going to cons and stuff like that. In the future, when I have cosplayers on, I will ask them about, you know, cosplaying and making their cosplays and things like that. I assume it, it'll it'll change depending on who you're. Yeah, it you're, depends who's if on. They're a vlogger, if they're an, uh, a skit actor, voice actor, Some, whatever. Yeah, but I just want to let I want to let you guys know right up front that there will be cosplayers on here because I know you guys want me to talk to cosplayers. Uh, next week is the official episode one. And I'll have somebody cool here to interview. Well, I know who it me. is, but I can't tell you. Well, that's just an idea. Well, well, I told you. I don't know who it is going to be exactly. Oh, wait. The person I told you, I am interviewing them, but I don't know if they'll be episode one. Okay. But they mi actually might be, though. Okay. That's super likely, but I don't know it. Okay, we're going to get to the interview, so I'm going to pass the laptop over to Dakota. Hey, guys. Welcome to episode zero of the convention review. What, what Behind you the cosplay. Behind the cosplay. <laughs> you see, that's why it's not my show. <laughs> he literally didn't know he was going to be doing this. No, he life. he texted me this morning, and he was like, hey, I need you to help me do this. Do you think you can? I was like, well, i got to work. He's like, that's cool. Just come over whenever you can. And I literally didn't know I was going to ask anyone to do this until like five minutes before that text was sent. So. <laughs> I like to imagine you sitting here by yourself, and you're like, hmm... I really don't want to do this by myself. Dakota's always down to record yeah, something. Yeah, no. I was like, this is going to be really weird if I interview myself. So let's... Uh, Dakota works near here. Let's One of these days, we should do a mock interview where it is you interviewing yourself, and it's like cuts. Oh, cut forth. it? Yeah. That would be hilarious. That would be great. Uh, also, a, guys, I do just want to say before I do throw it completely over to Dakota, even though I thought I already did, uh, if you like this format and you want to hear, like... I know this isn't supposed to be about us, but like maybe every now and then, like every... 10 episodes or something you want to hear like a crew member on here to kind of hear about how they got into this and like got into the being part of convention reviews let me know maybe i'll maybe i'll interview dakota at some point i feel like an interview for all of them the crew would be i should do it at some point at some point i feel like i shouldn't be the first because they've everybody's heard my i'm stories. not rushing it yeah but okay let's get into this future we, stuff what what do we got what are the questions okay well i gotta ask you cody okay who exactly are you what's what's the story of Cody Bennett? Um, well, I am Cody Bennett, like Dakota, our host, said. And oh, don't mess with that. My bad. 
<laughs> sorry, was, sorry, because that, that can make I thought it was sticking out. out, so I was trying to push it back in. Um, But I am Cody. I run the Convention Reviews channel, which you guys, if you're watching this, you know this. Normally, you might not know the person on here, but I run the Convention Reviews channel. I also do run Cody's World Travels, which is my newest channel. How many subs are you up to on there, by the way? It's like 1,200 now. 1,200? Nice. Maybe more than that. Might be 13. You're almost at 12K on here, right? No, I'm at 14,000. Yeah, 14, the last time I checked was almost 12K. Yeah, we broke 14,000 on commission reviews, which is amazing. Thank you so much to all you guys. Congratulations I for that. Thank you. I probably won't make another like full video until I hit maybe like 25K or something. Like that. But it's going quick now. I remember, you remember last year we were like, why hasn't it hit 10,000? Dude, it was this time last year we were at 8K. Yeah. And then you didn't hit 10K until what? It March? was earlier this year. It was like February, February. March. Yeah, which is crazy. And now I'm at 14 already. And that, it's like, yeah, it's crazy. And I haven't been putting out any videos really, so I'm like, what's mm -hmm. going that on? That could be part of it. How? People miss you. I don't know, man. Because I know, because I know uh, one of the YouTubers I like, he's been kind of ghosting for a while, and he, uh, so I just go back and I just rewatch a lot of the stuff he puts out. Uh, he'd already put. But that's out. not gonna ra raise your subscribers. But maybe if, your views. Maybe if every. Oh, well, I guess maybe the views go up, and then that can make the video more searchable. I mean, who knows what's going on? But, but then in one of the guys I, that guy I was talking about has like millions of subscribers. Uh, that's true. So. Okay, uh, but that's me, mm -hmm. basically. So what? All right. Well. Tell me about where you grew up, Cody. What, okay. What was like in Midwest America? Well, as Dakota spoiled, I grew up in the Midwest of America, Indiana. I'm not going to obviously give my exact location. I wouldn't expect anyone to do that, but... Central. We'll say yeah, central. central Indiana. Central mid, Central Midwest. For sure, like right in the middle of the Midwest. Indiana. I never thought about it. It really is. Yeah. We're, we're near Indianapolis. I'm not going to say where, but we're like... Not in the city, but we're around that area. So you can, uh, we're in that direction. I'll let you. Be There's the cornfields everywhere. That's all. What? Saying. Yeah, my childhood life though was, uh, yeah. Well, you didn't really ask. That. You just asked where I grew up. Yeah. You, why don't you let me get to it, man? Oh, is that a question? <laughs> all right. I don't know the questions. I didn't write. Let them. Me, let, you didn't write the questions <laughs> down, and then hand me the computer. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Three, two, three, two, Okay, through your childhood, were you always into nerdy things, or did you get into that later in life? That's the next question? Yep. Oh, I don't, I don't remember that. I really don't remember the order. Uh, yeah, I was definitely always into nerdy things. I think the first... It started with video games. My older brother, Jeff, he was really into video games. and Oh, and Star Wars. Uh, he, he like took us to see the prequels. And I don't know if he hated them or not, but he, he acted like he liked them, at least maybe for I our sake. I think that's how every parent was. Like, all the kids were like, yay, Star Wars, but all the parents were just sitting there like, mm. Yeah. But we definitely, I still don't have a, a, like, huge hate for the prequels or anything, but I won't get into that right now, but, um. Another topic for another day. Yeah, but I we probably remember that. probably have a podcast that, about somewhere. Probably. That's what I think started my nerdiness, was him having us watch Star Wars, and then he gave us a lot of our game systems, like my Nintendo 64, my, uh, all, like, the original Nintendo, Super Nintendo, my PlayStation 2 when we were kids, all that stuff given to us by him. And then the big thing I remember that, like, probably changed the rest of my life, I remember coming home from school one day. I think I was in third grade. I'm not sure. I don't know why that sounds right to me. But I came home from school one day, and I walked in, I turned on the TV. Boom. Dragon Ball Z. And I remember what episode. You probably, I don't know if this is a filler, if you saw this episode or not. You might have skipped it. You skipped a filler, right? Most of it. it remember, was like, you and I watched that together, so the only filler I remember skipping was the, uh, not peel off, the Garlic Jr. saga. Oh, okay. So you probably saw it. It was, uh... Early on, when Goku was flying to Namek, okay. and he went in the spacesuit outside the ship, he had to like fix something, you know what I'm talking about? I think so. Well, that's the first episode I ever saw. And then I was like, well, that was cool, I guess. And then I just kept watching, and I remember watching all the Frieza saga, and then my brother and I watched all through that, and that got us into Naruto. And then from there, it just spiraled and, like, snowballed. And I think we did give up anime for a little bit, but then we came back because me, me and my brother were like, let's watch Dragon Ball again. Uh, and this was, like, middle school maybe and started watching that. The way that I would remember it hap happening was would think it would happen, the whole getting back into the Dragon Ball Z thing. Yeah. Was 
the DVD sets started. That's what out. it was, yeah. And then you start buying them, and you're like, well, let's just rewatch them. And then you yeah. had all of them, and then they they're coming out periodic through high school. And then I and then I'm not into anime, and then you get me into anime from yeah. that point. And, and then well, we wanted something else to watch. I remember on the DVD sets, there was a commercial for One Piece beforehand, and I had watched like a little bit of it when it was on Toonami. We like, don't the talk four, about that one. The four kids dub, you know, the one with the best opening. Gaio. Yeah yo, yeah yo. I actually do like that. I'm not. That's that's a fire <laughs> intro. I don't care what anybody ever says. That um, is a great intro. But they were like uncut fool, and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll watch this. I thought it was gonna be the same thing, so I went and started watching One Piece. From there, like moving over to another anime, that's what made me like, okay, let's go. Then I got Dakota into it and never looked back. What do we got? What's next? All right. Um, you pretty much answered everything in that one. Well, what is it? The next one, and that what well, was what type of nerdy things you're into, anime. Oh, okay. Videos. You pretty much already covered okay. that. Well, let's talk about this real quick. Um, unless you want to get into your life, you've recently been getting back into watching movies. Can you yeah. tell me about that? Like, what what started? Because I remember for for like at least two years, like it was very very hard to get you to go to a movie. Uh, I don't know why well, I've got back into movies recently. I've just been well. I, I think can it's understand why. Be- I'm gonna be real with you. I think it's because, and some of my, my, of my viewers are probably going to scoff at this, I haven't been watching a lot of anime. Okay. Uh, I think I just go through cycles. Honestly, I did it with games, too. When I was in high school, I think before I met, no, met you again, obviously. Before we started hanging out. Yeah. Uh, maybe not, though. I think we, didn't we play games when I was in high school? Well, um, there was a point, though. I don't remember when Dragon it was. Dragon Ball Z. That, that might have been it. There was a point where I wasn't playing new games. And then that ended. I play games a lot now. And now I watch movies a lot. And I think I'm just at that point where I can't just do all three at once for some reason. So anime's taking the hit. See, that might be my problem because I do do all three. Yeah, I said do-do. You do do all three? I do do all three. Well, I feel I like do- most people can. It's I do do on all three of them. No. See, um, but I go through cycles where I'll be in an anime mood for like two weeks. Like, right, mm-hmm. that's what I'm on right now. I'm in an anime yeah. mood. Well, mine's just not like two weeks. Mine's like... Years. A year or two, yeah. Because like, I remember last year you started going to see movies again. Yeah. I was like, you told me I saw this movie. I well, this also, movie. I was dating a girl who started getting me to watching more movies, mm-hmm. and then, and then even after we broke up, I was like, well, I want to see more movies. And mm-hmm. it also helped that a lot of good movies have been coming out this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, that obviously draws me. You seen Logan movie. yet? No. But I need to. I, on the podcast that I listen to, they almost spoiled it the other day. I had to like skip through really quick. I'm like, Ooh, no, 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 no. That spoil for they were like Logan spoilers ahead, and they just started talking, and I'm like, I didn't hear anything. But I like quickly. I was at work. I had to pull my phone out. I'm like, what was, was the game of Greggy? Like, yes. I'm like, dude, <laughs> why so quick? Oh my gosh. Okay, um, what what else you got? Okay, next one is has any of that changed as you've grown up and oh, I, like anime stuff? Yeah, it's. I think that's we kind of answered that. I mean. All right, now let's go. Let's switch gears a little bit. Tell me about high school. Tell me what high school was like for you. Were you popular? Were you nerdy? Were you in the middle? Uh, you might be able to answer this really well too, because you knew me throughout of high school. Well, yeah, but uh, I think I think if I look at me, I was a very I could probably answer every single one of these yeah, questions honestly. for you. I was the same in ways, but I was so different in a lot of ways too. Uh, I had like this really long hair. Like, notoriously. The longest I think it ever got is it, when you'd straighten it, it would go down to your shoulders. Yeah, I would straighten my hair. It was, I don't know what I was thinking. You can see it in the early vlogs, like mm-hmm. that first crossroads we went to. Um, but as far as, like, what, what like, click, quote-unquote, I would belong to, I think I, like, lied kind of near the nerdy side, but not, like... Not like the nerd, nerd kids. I was like a weird kid, I feel like. I don't think... You were the one that was going to shoot the school up, according that, to some people. Yeah, there, I had... Mo- <laughs> Dude, there's somebody who legitimately said they thought I would shoot the school up. I'm sorry. I'm not going like, to call out anyone else I went to school and I'm, with. And not to play it on school shootings by anyone. No, 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 no. Not to make it Somebody, no, somebody said that about no, me. Yeah. Yeah, like he's not making that up. Someone said that about me like a year or two ago. They were like... To someone else I knew. They were like, oh, you know Cody? I, th- I thought he was a kid that was going to shoot up the school. Like, pretty rude to even say to begin with. But, uh, I mean, why me? I don't understand that. I mean, I don't think I... I, I wasn't, like, a popular kid, but I don't think I... What, what do you think? What do I, I think? Where I was mean, I? And 
I mean, to me, you were just kind of went before we started hanging out again. I was like, One "Where's Cody?" You were just kind of shy. You were just kind of yeah. quiet. Oh yeah, I was yourself. shy. I should have mentioned that. I was really shy. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of quiet, kept to yourself, did your work, listened to your music. Like I every sucked other. at high school. Oh yeah, I got so, a lot of Fs. I know. Uh, I know many tons of people like my stepdad who would say things like. Uh, High school was easy for me. It was so easy. I'm like, well, it wasn't easy for me. <laughs> yeah. It was hard. But, uh, and it can be for some kids. Um, I would never go back. I was just now, saying. did you, uh, you hung out with a lot of the nerd group, though, as you could say. A lot of the people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's not a, f- and that's None not of them bad. I'm friends with anymore, though. Yes. Yeah. And that's not belittling the, the nerd group by any means. It's the stereotypical nerd group is what I mean, mm-hmm. like what we mean by this. Yeah, like your tip, your your high school otaku's, weeds. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, again, not There's talking anime me. kids, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and I didn't get into anime until after, like towards the end of high school. Start. Well, I got you into Dragon Ball sophomore then, year, but you didn't kinda, really go into anything else for a while. I Dragon Ball, we got almost done with Dragon Ball, and I was like, dang, I want something else to watch. And I was like, One Piece. And then we were getting through on One Piece, and I was like, I, I think it was watch. 2011. Yeah. I, got you, I got you into some other stuff. I had you watch Gurren Lagann, Full Metal Alchemist. Was, Pretty sure that was 2000. It was or FMA, 2010. And I was in love with it. And then you like watched uh, Gurren, and then I loved it. And uh, from there, I still have my core drill. It hangs, it hangs in my car. I have mine in my window. closet over there. I keep yeah. it. I, I like to keep my core drill with me because, and it's cheesy, but in a sense, I like to think of it as my actual like drill because it was we all. Yeah, all everybody of us in our group. If you've watched Grand Lagan, you know what the core group, the core drill is. We, everyone. We all had one, and we all bonded hardcore over this show. Yeah. And so I will keep my core drill until the day I die because, in a sense. It really is the heart of my soul. This is still all pre-con, though. Mm-hmm. We've never been to a con yet, right? Mm-hmm. With I don't 2000, think. Gurren was like leading up to our first yeah. con, because I remember I freaked out. It was that when year. When I found out, um, I don't know what people's opinions are, but when I found out Vic Mignogna was going to be mm-hmm. the guest, and I had just finished FMA, and I was yeah. like, oh! That's what, well, we'll get into the first con later, but. Um, oh, speaking of. Oh, is it now? How do you get into the convention world? Oh, how did I get into the convention world? How did you get world? into it? And uh, tell me about your first con, what it was about. Okay, well, how I got into it was actually my brother, Chris, who you can see in the vlogs. Him and his friends found out about this convention happening called Anime Crossroads. I almost said called Anime Crossroads 2011, because that's how I say it. I never just say Anime Crossroads when I'm talking about that first one. But it was just called Anime Crossroads, and this was back in 2011. And he mentioned it to me, like, bragging. He's like, I'm going to go to this anime convention. Ah, and we were already out of high school at this point, so it yeah, was late. Chris was, is two years below us. But he was out of high school, too, because he got expelled. Oh, that's right, for another... That's a whole other story, but... Uh, another but, day, you know, another podcast. We started late, though. Like, we see so many kids when we go to cons that are still in high school, or, like, middle school. Like, we were 19. Yeah. Was that, I wasn't 20 yet? No, we were 19. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were, you sure 19. we were 18? We were 19 because it was 2011 when we turned... End of 2000. We had just turned 19. Mm-hmm. You're right. Um, you literally. Yeah. Well, you only a month before me. Yeah. But, um, so... You're the baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm the youngest. Ha <laughs> ha, laugh well, no, Nate's at the baby. The youngest. Nate's oh, the yeah, youngest. Nate is the, it's just crazy because he's the only one that owns a house. And is bald. And is bald. <laughs> I mean, I'm not... I'm getting there. Uh, but Not like Nate. Not as uh, as Anyway, me. but... So Chris is bragging at me about going to this con, and I'm like, I want to go. And he's like, you can't go. And I'm like, why can't yeah, I go? Yeah, he was mad when you were like, Dude, he was stinked that I wanted to go. And I'm like, why, dude? That's not fair. Like, I want to go to this convention. I love anime. Like, let me, let me he see like, what this is about. He, like, flat out was like, no, you're not allowed to Yeah, go. he said I'm not allowed. To... No, 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 this is later. This is later. Oh, that was later. He said I can't go. So I got my own room, and I invited you. It was just me and you in that room. Yeah, right? I remember that. Yeah, I, I invited you. And I remember telling Dakota, or not telling Dakota, telling Chris, I was like, Dakota and I got our own room, and we're going to go. We're not going to be in your hair. Like, we're not going to bug you. And that's when he said, you're not allowed. He's like, you're not allowed to go to this con at all. He was he was serious, right? No, oh, he was dead serious. He was adamant. I think he just wanted to, like, oh, my older brother's going to be bringing me down. I don't want him there. Dude, we kind of, like, did our own thing that we did. We did. We didn't we would hang him. out with him and Tyler, and I think. Well, we did hang out with him and Tyler in Dallas, and mm-hmm. was Ivan at that one? No, Ivan didn't go till the next year, did he? No, I think Ivan was there. Um, Are you sure? I don't think Ivan was there. Well, anyway, the, I don't even know if the viewers know who Ivan is. It doesn't is. matter. Yeah, but but 
I mean, it was all fine. When we went, everybody had a good time. Mm-hmm. Like, he wasn't brought down by us. I don't know what his problem was. But, yeah, Anime Crossroads 2011, that was the first con. That feels like forever ago, but <laughs> I guess it was. It was like six now, years ago. Um, have your view... Has, have you, You've been to a lot of cons. It's been five years. Over 50. Coming up coming up this year is the five-year anniversary. No, of, uh, of what? Going to cons? Of the first time we went to a convention. No, dude. It's 2017. Six years. That was last year. Yeah, six years. Um. So, yeah, that's right. I remember. <laughs> um. So this is the six-year anniversary. Now, in six years, has your view on the cons changed? Has it stayed? Like, um... Have you started viewing it in different ways? I know you were telling me before you were starting to view on certain ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I think my view on cons has changed a few different times. So that first con, if you remember, I actually it ended was, up really lucky having you interview me for this because you were there. You're the only one with me. First, That first con was... We That's were, the top ten best weekends of my life so far. Just because, not because the con was good... Which it was, I think. It was the first time we'd ever done anything, like, adult like that. Yeah, on our own. Like, we went out on our own. We got our own hotel room. Paid for everything ourselves. Yeah. Paid for... Walked to McDonald's and got our our own Yeah, this sounds so trivial now. (coughs) Sorry. It sounds so trivial and so dumb now, but we had never done that. We were 19. We'd never really had a job. No. Of our own. We somehow got money. I say... Well, I I would do a a volunteer thing. Was that the year that we were bread men? Earlier that year, we did the bread man thing. 2011, yeah, that was that year. That, I might have saved my money from that to go to this con. Uh, I think I had, no, I definitely didn't have money left over. For but that. the cons are different because, okay, back then, I remember when we got there, we were so hyped because we didn't even know what to expect. And we went in, uh, I remember there's a part in the vlog where we're walking on the edge and we're like, we're over here because we're nonconformists. All these other people are nonconformists too, but we're even more nonconformists. Do you remember that? Vaguely, <laughs> we said that, and I think it's because more that we were didn't know what to do. We were like shy. We we're like, how do we get into this? Like, and Nakota's not even shy anyway. Expect even less back then. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, but we still we didn't know like what did, who do we talk to? Where do we go? What do we do here? But uh, so it was very exciting, very very exciting at that first con. I remember coming home. I don't know if you felt this way. I remember saying to my mom when I got home, I said, I will never have an experience that good again. I <laughs> said that to her. <laughs> I mean, but think at the, about the time. Like, we didn't know... That we'd be going again. It'd probably something we'll do every now and then. Yeah, we didn't expect it. Convention Reviews wasn't even, like, halfway the considered. The reason they filmed it was just to film it. Yeah, I recorded it because I've been recording... Well, we talk about recording later. I'll get into that later. But okay. I did record it. Um, and so... The, but the way it's changed, going into the future, there does become a time where, like... Um, it's just become natural almost. Like we get to a con and we're like, we know what we're doing. We've been here so many times. Like we get the room, we're just chilling. That's you know? how. That's how I feel. Like now I'm just like, all right, what do we do? Okay, yeah. what time is this? Like, it's gotten to me at this point, and I think the last time I went to a con, which was over a year ago. I'm sorry, guys. It was almost a year ago, not over yet. Almost, yeah, no, um, almost a year ago. I mean, I guess I did go to Crossroads, but it was for like a couple hours. Yeah. Um. So, I remember thinking to myself, is there really anything we need to do right now? Yeah. Like, we can walk around the con and film and do that, but I mean, I've been, I've gone to so many that I've been to all the panels. I've been to the dealer's well, room, which the dealer's room never gets old. But it didn't even change that year at Anime Midwest. Like, mm-hmm. we like things to change a little bit to keep it fresh, and that's what I think my view on cons now is the biggest, and it might make some people sad to hear this, but... In the beginning, it was so exciting. We went to, like, every panel we could. We didn't even know about the game room then, but the dealer's room blew our mind. Like, everything was just so exciting. And now we go, we don't even hardly ever go you gotta to panels. View, you got to view us the way you view, like, a movie critic. Like, yeah. a movie critic, yeah, they're going to... We're going to nitpick at a con because the way we've done a critic it so would nitpick at a movie because they've seen all the movies. Yeah, we've, we've seen, seen all the cons. Well, not all the cons. But we've seen, like... Oh, so many. Mm. We've seen more than your average. We know con the routine goer. for the average con. Dra- I mean, sure, there's the big cons like Dragon Con or a comic. See, con. that's the other thing. That's where my view, I think, changed again. Was going to Dragon Con made me be like, oh, there's this kind of thing out here. Like, we thought we had kind of seen it all, and you didn't get to go to Dragon Con, but 
it was just like this is another world mm-hmm. like I want to see more stuff like this uh, and then and then going to the Philippines uh, and coming back and going to ASIN, I think that was the biggest um, for Drew and I because it was me and Drew at that con we were both just like dude we have done this bef- so many times we didn't even want to record cosplay mm-hmm. we were like like what is the point why are we still doing this and that probably sucks for people to hear I don't feel that way now things I've been re- reinvigorated I think what needs to happen I think the what part of that not to interrupt you but I think part of that was because your mind was this post or pre uh, Philippines post that's yeah so your mind was still on Philippines yeah. you're still readjusting to America dude you're I still... wasn't back yet my brain wasn't back yet that's I, I guarantee you if it would have just been another year you yeah. would have had a blast and yeah. that's how it's gonna be for Midwest that's what I think I think it's been long enough now because it took me a long time to get back used to being in America and that's a whole other story to go into but Living in America. but like I wasn't I don't think I was ready to be at a con I just kind of forced it because I was like we got to get back into this at some point and I think that's actually a good thing that you did go yeah. to it because if you hadn't, then what was what would have been the next con Midwest? I guess. Then you'd be going in Midwest, not even ready. You've got yeah. your mind now set I'm back ready. on it. You've got your back here. You're doing stuff with this channel as well as the travel channel. Mm-hmm. You've got your mind right where it needs to be in the perfect spot. And I think you're going to do good, and I think it's going to be good. We're going to come up with some good content in Midwest. Yeah, that excitement is back. I'm going to try and do some stuff in Midwest. I've got a few ideas I'm, t- I'm throwing around. Probably going to start try to do some uh, bit vlogs, like vlogs that look like vlogs, but they're staged. They're bits. They're faked. Mm-hmm. Like to be not fake to like lie. Like people will know it's fake. Like to be like a... it'll seem real, but obviously it's a joke. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I want because but... I like that. It'll be, in a sense, ripping off David Dobrik, but I want to do that in a con scene. Do it, dude. But but I think, before we get on to the next question, what I want to say really quick is just... Sorry, I didn't even talk about myself. Then. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, I think the thing that's really going to get the excitement back up about cons is I have to go to new cons. Exactly, like, yeah. We have to we have to start breaking out of I the think Midwest. we need to start going to more cons in Kentucky. Yeah, there's good cons there, dude. OMG Con just happened. Mm-hmm. I love that con. More con. We've. I've never been to a con. Well, I shouldn't t- say that. We've only been to one con in Ohio. We we call ourselves the kings of the Midwest, and yet we've only been to like. Ohio. That's jokingly. I don't want people to think that we're like over here cocky. No, no, we don't really. We think joke that, around. In in our own group, we call ourselves the kings. Yeah. It makes ourselves feel better. But but yeah, we haven't seen all the Midwest at all. Mm. Uh. So. We've never been to a con in Michigan. Yeah, we have Yomacon. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think of Detroit. Tennessee. As, is it, Tennessee the South? Or is that the Midwest? That's two states below us. But does that count as the South? Mm-hmm. Oh, guys, ignore the train. There is a train going by. That's something that if you listen to the old podcast, Kentucky. It's not Kentucky also counts as the South. Whatever, man. It's a state below us. Okay, let's get on to the next question. We can't. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Now, you've been making the videos for quite a while. Yeah. Now, let's go back to the beginning. When was the very first time tell me about the first time you made a video like it didn't even have to have been posted anywhere. you just made a video for funsies tell me about that and then you can spiral into how you got onto youtube i don't know if you even know the first video i ever made you might um when i was a kid my do you brother, still have this video no and can i use no. it as blackmail we don't have it. when i was a kid it's too young even to use blackmail we'd be cute oh yeah that young when I was a kid with my brother, like a kid kid, uh, like, I don't know, six, maybe younger, we would do, like, puppet shows behind our couch, and my dad, well, you can blame my dad for all of this, I guess, because he g- had this video camera, and he gave it to us. We couldn't see our own puppet shows. We would perform them for no one. <laughs> so he gave us his camera to set up, and he taught us how to use it to record our puppet shows so we could go back and watch them and show it to our parents and stuff. That was the start of everything. That's probably one of the most adorable stories. You I've didn't know that? Heard. That's absolutely adorable. I like to imagine you and Chris behind that couch just like, hey there. Yeah. And and then we got... And then watch it. Hey, uh, we made a scenario. But we kept using that camera. And then we started recording other random stupid stuff. And we eventually stopped, but I still had that in my blood. You know what I mean? So then it comes into what you know about. A lot later on, YouTube had finally started... And we're like, this we was, gotta get a chunk of this. This is like pre- post two thousand five. <laughs> this is two thousand seven, right now. We're like, it's me, my brother, this dude that used to live next to us named Dylan, 
and our friend Mason. And we're like, we gotta get a chunk of this YouTube. We're gonna make it rich. We're making that money. And uh, obviously, no. But we started what was called SVR TV. Still exists, but those old videos can't be watched now because they had a lot of copyrighted music in them. So those very first ones, I have them. I have them, but they're not on YouTube. There are a lot of videos though because eventually, eventually you joined mm -hmm. our sophomore year in high school. You joined on to SVR TV. And it just evolved from there. And basically the way, a lot of people know this story already, but the way Convention Review started is if you look at the URL for that channel, it's convention review or it's youtube.com slash the SVR TV too. I'm pretty sure it still says that. And I think it does. Last that. time I checked, it definitely yeah, still does. Because we were trying to, this was at the time when everybody was making a second channel at like Shane Dawson 2, Smosh 2, like that kind of stuff. And we were like, we need an SVR too. For our 12 subscribers. Yeah, for our like behind the scenes that of our videos like, that don't have of, behind the scenes. One of them was my mom, not really, but. <coughs> one of them was probably me on another channel. Uh, more than one, I'm sure. Multiple. All of them probably were. But, because uh, we didn't, like, get any comments back then. And if we did, it was like, this was horrible. <laughs> but, so, that channel was supposed to be behind the scenes. So, when I recorded that first con, I was like, I'm just going to post it on here. Where else would I post it? And then eventually, you, like, eventually I decided that I was going to make convention reviews. And when I did that, I was just like, well, I've already been posting con stuff on this channel. I'll keep doing it. So when the very first Convention Reviews videos came out for Anime Midwest 2013, it was not on Convention Reviews. It was on that channel, like they're viewable on there. But that channel at the time was still called SVR TV 2. You know what would be a fun idea years down the line? What? I'm sure you still have the intro introduction video to SVR TV 2. Yeah, I have To SVR TV 2? Yeah, I saw it. One day just... Re-upload it? Just re-upload it and explain this is what the very first channel, or video on this channel was. It's not viewable anymore, like, if you scroll down, but if this is what... The my, real first the video. The very first video for this channel was, and it's just me and you, like, <laughs> Dude, I hadn't showered in, like, a day or something. Was, my hair chilling. was long and greasy. I, I was here on one of the weekend uh, stays. Yeah, and we were like, let's just do this, man. Dude, I should. You're right. I should post that sometime. Not anytime soon, maybe. No, no, no. And way in the future. Yeah, like maybe two, three years. Like, if you guys are interested, this is actually how this channel started. And no, it has nothing to do with anything that's happening now, but... All right, so... Um, how did you... How did, did you teach yourself to do all the... I know all the editing and stuff. I know you did that. But um, as far as making... You know what? Tell me how you learned, and then I have another question of my own. Okay. Damn. How I learned mm -hmm. all on my own. Didn't take, go to any classes. Nobody taught me anything. Which anybody can do. Yeah. Anybody. Or I guess I shouldn't give myself all the credit. Uh, I did learn YouTube. a lot on my own, but YouTube. YouTube can teach you anything, especially when it comes to camera stuff. Like, just start Googling it. Or, well, I mean, YouTube it. Start YouTubing. If you want to get into video, look up. How do I make a video? And then just start clicking on related videos. And like, if you want to learn to edit, pick a program. I recommend Adobe Premiere Pro. And then start looking up, how do I edit with Adobe Premiere Pro? And just learn. Like you, I'm not putting down anyone that went to school for this, but you don't need to go to school to learn how to do this. It'll help. It might make it go quicker. It'll help you find a career faster. Yeah. If you're looking Maybe. for... Maybe. But looking they're, they're for looking it. for portfolio, though, mm -hmm. a lot of times. And I'm not looking to be in, you know, somebody's... Somebody's Trying under to be self-employed. Yeah, exactly. So that's how I learned. What's your follow-up? My follow-up question is, uh, what, was it, what was it that inspired you to really start making the videos? What, which videos? Like your SVR TV videos and then let up into what even inspired convention reviews. Well, what inspired SVR TV was Shane Dawson and Smosh. 100%. Nigahiga, that kind of stuff. We just wanted to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what inspired convention reviews was 100%. We were going to go to Anime Midwest, right? 2013. And we didn't. I wanted to watch videos of it. <laughs> like, to be honest, I wanted to see what it looked like before I went. I didn't want to just go blind. Not that I was like, this is going to be a bad con. I need to make sure it's a good con. It, was, it wasn't It was like that at all. It was like, I just am so excited. I want to see what it looks like. And so somewhere in my brain, I was like, well, I already make videos. Like, I'll just 
do it for this con and like I would review it so that people can really see what it looks like mm-hmm. and it was more just like if no one else is going to do it I'll do it is that very first review still on the channel yeah can people still go find yeah. it yeah you should watch that anime isn't it like 12 Midwest, minutes long yeah <sighs> Anime Midwest uh, 2013 review. Look that up. The last time I tried to watch it, it's been a hot minute, but the last I couldn't make it. It's Dude, the music behind it is fairy tale music. <laughs> the only thing that, honestly, I, uh, I have is, the, for some reason, the audio quality of your speaking is very, like, not... It wasn't recorded on this mic. What was I it? recorded it on a camera ah. and then cut out the video. That's how we used to do voiceover. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, that's how it all happened, and you can go watch that. But, um, what else you got? So, yeah. So, what are your favorite? You said, uh, oh, here we go. So, what is your favorite video? And follow up, what are what are your favorites that? Let me put it this way: What's your favorite video that is out there? And what is your favorite video that you had making? I had fun making. Oh, I had favorite making. Favorite. Tell me the one you had the most fun and is your favorite that you made like during the process. Um, and then and my favorite that just exists. That just exists in general. I think my favorite that just exists. Is this for convention reviews only, or like it, any of them, dude? Well, I guess it would still be in convention reviews. I think my favorite video is probably my Dragon Con music video, just because it means good. a lot of things to me. I think it's really good. Uh, I, per, a lot of people say it's not my best. I personally think it's my best music video I've made just because I did so much stuff in that video that I've never done before. It's, it's really good. Like, I went out of the way to try new things in that video. Like, Guys, a lot you, of new things. If you haven't seen his Dragon Con video look, I sound like that James Lipton who interviews the actors. If you have not seen I don't know work, what you're talking about. I suggest you go look at it right now. Yeah, but you should watch that video, guys. It's good. I like it. I mean, it's not as cinematic as the videos I do now, but it's just the quick cuts in it. Blow my mind still when I watch it. I'm like, how did I do that? How did I take the time to do that? As far as my favorite video in the process of making, you might know the answer to this, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but it's not my video. Okay. Is that okay? Um, That's fine. It's Drew's Anime Midwest video last year. That was a fun video to make. Dude, I had so much fun with that. That was amazing. And that's probably one of the reasons I'm so hyped to get back to Anime Midwest. He better do something. Dude. I'm going to text him soon and make sure he's bringing his A game. Dude, he needs to just do the eye to eye. It's time. If he doesn't do eye to eye at this one, I'm going to start planning and I'm going to do eye to eye. I'll write him and tell him it's time. Because that was so fun. And not because of getting cosplayers in it. That was cool. What was fun was the whole crew was so invested in this. We walked around with Drew for so long, like, let's shoot here, let's shoot here. Honestly, we were so hyped about it. Honestly, I think that's what we need. What we should just do at cons yeah. now. Like, yeah, we can go to panels we want. Yeah, we can go to the things that we want to get to on time. But I think the rest of the con should just be us just messing yeah. around. Mess around Nowhere and record go. it. I think that's been our problem the last few years. We've been we, trying to be too serious. We've been trying serious. serious. We're trying, we just need to go and have fun. Yeah. You we know, haven't been letting ourselves And if that fun. means sometimes going and hanging out in the room, we hang out there for an hour. Or some, or we'll go out and just walk around, not even have yeah. to do anything. Not even always having to be filming everything. Well, know? I'm going to film Well, it. I mean like stopping and filming it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we can just film just like as, as it we goes. go. You yeah. know, stop and film things as we go. I think that's what we all need to do, myself yeah. And that's why Midwest last year was so good because we, for so, like for hours at a time, we stopped caring about oh, I need to go find cosplayers, that kind of thing. And we cared about, we need to go and make this video that's, he put it out there, you know, there are cosplayers in it, and you guys should really go watch it. What's it called? Uh, uh, Anime Midwest. It's just, if you just go to his channel, it's just... Drewby Doo. Drewby Doo is Drew's channel. If you just go, it's like the most recent Anime Midwest. It's like four or five down. Yeah, maybe. you should really watch that video. It's the Justin Timberlake song. I can't remember uh, Can't called. Stop the Feeling. Can't Stop the Feeling. I watched that heard video. that song. Oh, and now I hear it all oh, the time. Oh, let's... It'll probably be one of my favorite songs till the day I die. Yeah. Oh, just because of that because video. Because it gives me those feels back from Anime Midwest. Yeah, it's it was one of the highlights. We can all agree. 2016 was not the greatest of years for some people. It was a good year. It wasn't great for us. We didn't have a good 2016. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I'm not saying it was a horrible year like everybody says. It had its good moments. But it was a lackluster year. Yeah, we'll but that was that. a highlight for us. That was the highlight. Ooh, I'm getting chills thinking about but it. But that's what was so good. And we need to, you guys should really go watch that. And you can, 
like I said, he put it out for everybody, but really, I really think that in all of our minds, we were that's doing our, this for us. That's our video. And that's how it needs to be. Like I feel like that's one of the reasons I started to get burned out on cons, because I wasn't doing this for me or for the crew or anybody anymore. I was doing this because now I'm obligated. I've yeah, done it for so long. Gotta, yeah. I even made a video on like, record cosplay. I made a video that was like, I'm gonna go to these cons because people have asked me to go here. I'm gonna go alone and just do it because people want me to do it. And I'm like, and I don't even know if I have fans there. Like, I went alone to Matsuri. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that because I had fans there that I was friends with too. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. I need. We need to just be doing this. For I've, us. I've thought this for a while. I've thought that for a while that we've needed to get back to what we originally started going to conventions for, and that's to have fun, to yeah. get away, it became, work it in the to process, a job. work in the process, and do the stuff you want to do. But like, ultimately, I'm here to have fun. Dude, and people could tell, too. And my... I don't know if you watch my Anime Central vlogs. There's only two of them, but... People, I kind of felt that way, but the same way. But people going. could tell. They, I got, I think, at least one comment on one of those vlogs that was like, dude, I can tell that you're, like, not into this anymore. And it's just like, I can't argue I could kind of tell that, too. You know, yeah. I, I never really wanted to say anything, but I could kind of tell you. It was always like, yeah, going to this con, you were... It was almost like you you knew you were going to have to edit a lot and yeah. you just weren't looking forward to doing all the editing you were going to have to do. Yeah. I and mean, but now... But now you're going to... But, like, I want to edit a video that's done for us. Like, if I was editing that video that Drew did last year, dude, I'd be so... Like, my travel videos. Maybe, I, maybe we should do that. Maybe I, this con we should plan and try to make a video yeah, like that we on, should, for your channel. We should do it for my channel, yeah. yeah we I, can change I, the music videos. They don't have to always be the same. I had people tell me... This is impromptu planning that you're hearing right now. We're literally... This wasn't pre-planned for us to make this into thing. We're yeah. planning something out as we go right now. We'll figure something out. Maybe do a lip sync or maybe even not a lip sync. Just do something fun. Mm -hmm. We'll find If Drew's not going to, then we'll do something. Mm -hmm. I had a song I wanted to do. I was going to bring it up to you one time and you said nah you didn't want to do that but I understand why because of the music copyright thing yeah the copyright's my big problem Drew just doesn't care mm -hmm. but his channel's not as big he doesn't have as much to lose mm -hmm. you know that's why he doesn't care well let, let's keep going I don't want this to go on forever right right we're getting close to the end okay. um let's see which if it, um where did it, what is the uh out of all the cons you've been to what is your most favorite let's tell you what, give me your top three you don't have to be in any particular order although I know what number one is Dragon Con? Yeah. Dragon Con is the number one con I ever went to. But in no particular, what are the next two, you would say? Do I have to give a year? No. Yomacon. Okay, if we're going to give that one a year, it's got to be 2014. Uh, that, that first time. 2015 was the second time? Mm -hmm. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Cause Maybe, dude, I don't know. 2015, 2015 was pretty They're good. They're so close. I, I think, I'm saying Yomacon. I'm not giving it a year. Yeah, Yomacon. Yeah. Yo no con's my second favorite con. And then I think my third favorite con, I don't think I'm missing anything. I really think it's got to be Midwest. I would love Midwest. It's our home con for a reason. I wasn't going to go last year because I was like, oh, I don't want to do it, what, four years in a row or something like that. But then it called to me. I was like, I can't skip it. It's At this point, it just might as well be the, the only. And there's so annual. many memories there. Because look, look, first con for convention reviews. Uh, the next year, it's the first time only me, you, and Nate went to a con. Mm -hmm. and that we, was a fun weekend. Yeah, we had a really good time. The next year, that was the first ever meetup, which was like a Kiku party type thing, and the first panel we ever did. Mm -hmm. You were there for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, the next year after that was what? Was that last year? Mm -hmm. Which was the whole uh, Drew's video. Mm -hmm. So every year, something, something. great. The, the least interesting year as far as things that happened at the con would be the first year. Yeah, but I think for they sure, had, I think they had just moved there. For sure, but it's still special because it's that where, was the f that was where convention review started. That's mm -hmm. the birthplace. Yeah, I I'm, don't don't get me wrong. That con was great. That first Midwest. I gave it a bad review though. <laughs> what what did you give it like a score? like a six or something? Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, looking back, it probably was about a six. It probably was. Because especially that dealer's room. Do you remember when oh, we had bad, that dude. dealer's it was room? Bad. Oh, it was hot in there. It was bad the next year too. Uh, no, it was what, still in there. The next two thousand two thousand fourteen. It was still in there. Because that, that's right. Two thousand fifteen is when they moved it to the. I think. No, I think it was the next year. It was the very next year Maybe. they moved. No, know. the next year is when they moved it into the bigger room. It was still inside the hotel. They hadn't gotten the oh, convention. Oh yeah, okay. It was in a but it wasn't room. in that basement room. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's my order for sure. Now, 
what is the... You've already hit the dream con, which would be Dragon Con, I assume. I did it. My dreams came true. Maybe that's why I lost uh, my will to you do hit this. it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. I've hit my... my uh, what's it called? Now... Uh, my peak? I've peaked. Well, since that was the dream con, what are some big conventions that you find yourself thinking, man, I really hope I can go to that someday? And let me stop you right there. I bet I can guess it. Okay. Anime Expo. For sure. Not a dream con. Not a dream con? No, but it's a, one of those big cons I really want to go to. Uh, dream cons. Well, yeah, you said I already hit the dream con, so I guess that is answering your question. That is a big con I want to go to, for sure. Missing it this year. Had plans to do it before I realized I was burning out. And then I was like, no, 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 I can't do this right now. I got to get back to what makes this this good. I know what your dream con is, and you're going to it next year. What? Big con. Yes, dude. Yeah. Well, I didn't even realize that until I saw people posting. I remember it again. you posting. The, I posted the it yesterday. The, the other day. Because I didn't know it was even coming up, and then I saw a is, bunch is it, of people. It's in like, California, it's a, right? Yeah, it's happening right now. And I was like, dude. I, I would love to go to VidCon. We should go, dude. We should plan it and make it happen. I'm, I'm down. Um, I don't know when it is next year. We'll see when they announce stuff. And, yeah, probably. Well, I'll let you know when I start planning it. But we should for sure plan to do that. I think VidCon, and that would change up the channel too. People would like to see something different. I think I uh, maybe we could go to some. Uh, different cons, like style cons, like horror cons, or I'd love to do something like that. It's uh, called a convention review. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Go to horror cons, but not uh, too much. It'll still primarily it, it'll be still anime. have to be a pop yeah. culture, somewhat pop culturey. But be. as far as my other big cons, though, like if we get into anime cons, um, I really want to go to soccer con. Mm-hmm. Don't know why, I'm just do for some reason. Where's that one at? That's in Seattle. What about Colossal Con? Are you want to go? really want to go to Colossal Con, no. but it makes me mad because I can never get a room. So it makes me upset. Put in for it now. I want to go to... Let me think here. Atomic... Is that What's it called? Atomic Lollipop. Is that what it's called? I gotta look this up. That sounds right. Atomic... It's this con in Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Atomic Lollipop. I think it's still going. Oh, it looks like it got canceled last year or something. I don't know. But I really want to go to Atomic Lollipop. Look up Atomic Lollipop trailer. Watch that video. It's so cool. Can you think of any other cons that we haven't been to that have been on, I've talked about or been on our list? Let's see. Otakon. I mean, there's obviously New York and San Diego Comic Cons. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather go to New York. But. Personally, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind going to San Diego, but just for the dealer's room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I know that dealer's room. E3, I'd like to... Know. E3 would be cool now that it's open to the public. It's not like a dream con, though. It's not... It's I not like really doing even e- a con. With, yeah, I like doing E3 from home. Yeah, to it, be honest. Yeah, because you couldn't... You, even if you want, you you have to pay to get into the press conferences. I don't know. Do you? I don't I know how it works. So. I don't know how it works, but I wouldn't want to. I'd re- I love watching the press conferences. Yeah. Right I've got all my angles. Mm-hmm. Sean Layden up there looking on the big screen. Looking like Sean Layden. Got a freaking Reggie. Ooh. But Ooh. anyway, mm-hmm. I can't think of my others. buddy is if you ready can't for you, think Reggie. Of, <laughs> if you can't think of any others, then I don't know. I think uh, no, I think I think that's what we uh, where we're at right now. We've been to so many, and then there's cons that happen all over the country. Like, yeah, we should go to a Colorado con sometime, just cause. For sure. Um, For sure. Uh, let's see. Now, people, they want to get into making this. You've had people make. Uh, Kind of copy your style, not to say that they're like copycats or anything. But mm, you've had I wouldn't people. say copy, be a uh, influence. Clearly influence, because well, I just want to point out I was influenced. Mm-hmm. You know, my stuff uh, <coughs> is not a hundred percent original. Right. Everybody's influenced from somebody. So, so the, my question is, uh, there are other people that want to do this. What's uh, what's your advice for these people that want to, to make get vid- into like making con videos, making con videos, or just making videos in general? Um, for making videos in general, my advice would be get a camera and learn how to use it really well. It doesn't have to be amazing. Just learn, get really good with that camera and then also learn an editing program. Seriously, and I really, I know you have to pay for it, but I highly, highly, highly recommend Premiere Pro because it's the one that they just constantly update and they constantly support. Like, you're almost future-proofing yourself by using Premiere Pro. That's the biggest reason. But either way, pick an editing program and just learn that one super well. And then as far as getting into con videos go, really just start doing it. I mean, I say this all the time, but you just got to start somewhere. You can plan and plan and plan. And that's uh, and that's something a lot of people, because when, 
that's what most people, professionals, will tell you. Just do it. And yeah. People like us, years ago, we think, well, what's the other device? I can't just go do it. Yeah, you that's can't what, just do it. I but mean, you can. In a sense, you can't. And you, you gotta okay, save yeah. Up. Look, you have to have a camera. You have to have the equipment. It, you know, it's not saying you can just, boom, do it. But in know? a way, you can now. Look, if you have an iPhone, iPhone cameras are insanely good now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not saying stick to that forever, but you can start with an iPhone. And then start putting that on your computer, edit that stuff, just upload these little videos. Because here's what's going to happen. You, like I was saying earlier, you can plan forever, but you don't know what it's really going to be like until you do it. And you might upload a video and be like, oh, I didn't like how I did that. I want to change this for next time. And it's slowly going to evolve over time, and it's going to snowball. Before you know it, you're the next convention reviews. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like when I started this channel, there were, you know, in the back of my head, I was like, it'd be cool if this thing became something, hit a thousand subscribers or something. That would be cool. But I never you're really at, you're thought. You're almost at 14, 14 now, I'm over 14,000. Mm-hmm. But I never thought it would really happen. But so I was just putting things out to be like, this is fun, whatever. And then you just keep doing it. I just kept doing it. And I'm like, it's, I guess the biggest thing is if you want to do this and you want to get big at it, and I'm still not even big. I wouldn't call myself big, but bigger at it mm-hmm. than the the big things are one just start just do it like Shia LaBeouf said two is consistency so start but then keep doing it don't stop even when you're like oh I put out a sucky video I put out plenty of sucky videos and I didn't stop you guys watch our talk fire I didn't stop after that uh, so keep doing it no matter what you put out just keep doing it and three is evolve you have to learn you can't just yes keep doing it but don't just keep doing the exact same thing Every time, try to do something a little different and see how people like that or how you like it. And then if you like that, keep that thing and then add another thing. Like it doesn't have to be all at once. Like we said earlier, go back and watch my first review. Then watch the last review I did. That did not happen overnight. Mm-hmm. That was years of learning. It's been six years. Yeah. Or sorry. Well, since then it's been almost four years. It's been four years. Almost, not yet, but pretty close though. Mm-hmm. So that that's my advice if you want to get into this. Um... Uh, I agree with everything you just said. Um, you just got to learn to do it yourself. You know, it's okay to try and ask for help. Oh, your screen went asleep. There it is. It's okay to ask for help when you need it, but as yeah, far- collab, collab. You know, like you're gonna be collabing with people I know. Yeah, this whole this entire series that we're starting is about to be a collab. Mm-hmm. Collaborative series. So you know, it's it's okay, um, and it it sounds like a lot of work, and. It can sound and even be pretty daunting, but yeah, it can it, be a lot of work. Mm-hmm. But uh, sometimes you just don't you don't even realize it, that you're working because you're you're enjoying, enjoying you're enjoying what you're doing. And you're working at your own pace. But that's the other thing I should say is don't do this if you don't really want to do it, like because you're gonna burn out. Look, I really want to do this. This is something I've been doing for so long, and even I am openly admitting that I was burning out. So if you don't even want to do it, think how fast you're going to burn out. You know mm. what I mean? So you, you got to want it. Exactly. Like, you got to mean it. Or, um, or don't even start. Um, Is now, that it? Yeah, that's it for that thing. And now let's move on to, uh, I think this will be the last bit. Um, what do you think the future for the cosplay world holds? What's the future of convention reviews? Do you see this continuing? Or do you think it'll die in a couple of years? Convention reviews? Yeah. I it didn't die now. This was the closest it's been to dying. So I think that if we do everything that we even talked about on this podcast today, mm-hmm. if we go back to the basics, I'm building a new base for convention reviews. That's what all this has been about. We're getting back to going to cons that we enjoy going to. We're getting back to just making sure we have fun at these cons and putting up this fun stuff. And not trying to be fake about it and be like, oh, yeah, this is great. But really, when we're, we're talking about it, we're like, oh, this kind of sucks. Uh, just get back to what made it good. Then I think that it's going to go on for y- at least years more, I would imagine. It's like what you said last year when we were doing the weekly podcast with Nate when we asked each other, where do we see ourselves in five years? And I still like to think that I will be working for you. In a, that would be dope. In the next five dope years. Dope AF. And Maybe I, next time I call you up to come interview me for a podcast, I can pay you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I seriously mean that. I would love one day to, for, for this to be a thing that yeah. we all can just do and like mooch off real, of you to do. Yeah, like a real thing. And I can 
I won't see it as mooching. You know, I can help my friends. Mm-hmm. You know, you're do this work. awesome thing. You're giving us work. That would be cool, but that's way down the line. Oh yeah, like um, I said, that's five years. But I mean, of course, you guys know I'm doing this travel channel now too. I don't want you guys to think that like. Obviously, I have to split my time. Obviously, but I don't want you guys to think that one day I'm gonna be like, "F this, I'm just doing travel," because this is sort of my roots. This is where I come back to. You know, I enjoy doing this stuff. And another train's coming, of course. I need to get. A st- Maybe we'll have a studio one day. <laughs> We've been saying that for a while. Um, just kind of let the horn go. Um, where do you want to be? We'll say in five years again. If I'm being 100% honest, mm-hmm. where I personally want to be in five And I don't years. mean like your location. <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to be, I'm just going to be totally honest, doing YouTube full time. You're very close to that already. Dude, I am. And I, I already do YouTube full time. I put more hours into YouTube every week than I do to my job. Mm-hmm. I mean. The so job is just a stable income. Yeah, the job is what's keeping me alive and keeping me being able to go do it. I would like to be able to be making enough just in total like transparency. I know some people don't like when you talk about money being made through YouTube. I make money off YouTube. Uh, if you don't know that, I do. And it's not a lot. I'm not trying to pretend like I'm making bank, but I would like... This guy over here thinking he's smosh or something. No, oh God. I've only imagined the amount of money they're making. But I want to just make enough. I don't want to be rich. Being rich would be awesome. Sorry, I just take that back. I'd love to be rich. But you don't that's not be rich. the goal. Yeah. That's not the goal. The goal is to have enough money to just be able to support this, to be able to do YouTube full-time without having to focus my, on something else. Because think of how much better the videos and everything would get mm-hmm. if I could just focus on this. So that's where I want to end up. And uh, to put similar to your point, something like that's going to take a while because... For sure. We're getting close, though. Take some YouTubers that I like, the Game Grumps. They've mm-hmm. been around... A little bit longer than you. Mm -hmm. They started in 2012. Mm -hmm. But they just... They announced earlier this year that they were developing their own video game. Yeah. And they were... I mean, I can't even fathom where things can go. Can I tell you what the game is? It's off top. It's a a dating simulator, but it's for DILFs. For what? Dads. Oh, It's a daddy dating simulator. (laughs) That sounds like something they want to make. I know. But think about it, though. Going back to, like, just the idea of it. Mm -hmm. One day... We might have our own con. Dude, that's the goal, and it's going to be on a cruise. To find out, they already do that. There's a couple cons. Ours will be that. better. But Ours can you be can you imagine, you go to a con, I'm the con chair, and then the staff, like the higher up staff, is the crew of convention reviews. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, our first year is going to be terrible, and other people are going to review it and be like, turns out convention reviews doesn't know what the F he's talking about. He can't run a con himself. Mm-hmm. But it'll be like, guys, we're trying, and then eventually get good. That would be amazing. Like. Mm-hmm. Or make our own anime? That's never gonna happen. <laughs> uh, I feel like a manga would be more uh, like yeah, a yeah. manga web Have comic. Chris draw it. Yeah, there you go. But maybe I mean, who knows what's gonna happen? The future can be anything. Mm-hmm. But that all that stuff, like what, all the stuff I'm saying, not off the table. I would 100 percent love to have my own con. Mm-hmm. Just once a year, you know. My uncle threw out around the idea of starting up his own con one time and acting like he was gonna be able to make it like popcorn sized immediately yeah. and I'm like yeah have fun no have uh, fun or at least this is another realistic thing that I could see happening if we got the budget if things kept blowing up a lot of you guys probably I can't just assume that all of you know who kind of funny is mm-hmm. it's another podcast they do this incredible live show once a year in San Francisco called kind of funny live and they put on an amazing show i've never been but you know both of us we've watched them mm-hmm. online and it's it's for just some podcasters they really make it over the top yeah they go all out if we could get if, a budget to do that kind of thing if i'm being realistic they're honestly my goals like as yeah to what dude I want to their do. goals 100 percent. if we could have convention reviews live something like that i don't even know what it would be i don't know what we would do but i would love to do that that's not off the table at all like or maybe even tour around. It'd be cool to tour around and not just go to cons, but to have shows like where we meet people. I would, speaking of in the future, I would like to, in the future, go go traveling outside of the country with you. But if you like, you're gonna take a trip one someday, just like a week long trip to like out of state. Mm-hmm. Totally be down to go with you. Yeah. Totally, absolutely, I'd be down. And then, I mean, I'm not even talking about you know my travel channel mm-hmm. but with with that going places too that'll be like 
who knows where that's going to lead? And because that could open up doors for convention reviews, mm -hmm. like so you cons could, in other countries. Exactly. I mean, could be going to the Tokyo convention. Comic Ken, I'd love to go. Is that what that is, dude? Like three hundred thousand people. It's insane, insane. I don't know. I don't know if I'd do a cosplay music video because I don't even feel like I'd be able to get around. Have you seen the videos? Like. Basically, it would be like a cosplayer just standing there, and there's a massive circle. Everybody has a camera. Like, I couldn't go in there and it's do like my thing. It's like paparazzi, I assume. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. It's like seeing the paparazzi around a, a cosplayer. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, let's, let's not to take the host thing away. Let's wrap this up. All right, what are your do you have any final words on this? Like, what are your final thoughts on like, this whole experience? Do you think this went well for the first time? The podcast? This podcast. I think... I mean, to us, it went well, but to us, we're just having a friend conversation. Yeah, like this is just something do. we would have a conversation. It just happens to be a script now. We're being a little more, um, what's the word? We've Enthusiastic. Known each, we've known each other our whole lives, so it's easier for us to, like, actually have a good conversation with this each other. This would be, other. like, a chill conversation, like, in a con before we go to bed or something. We mm. wouldn't be so enthusiastic, mm. but, uh, because we're on a podcast. But I think that this went awesome. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, I don't know how long this went, but... It was probably at least over an hour. Yeah. I, I want to keep them to, like, around an hour, so maybe... I'm learning. Maybe I'll cut some questions out. Maybe you should do, like, do it in parts, like, one day part one, no, the next no, day no, part no. two. Uh, I've already got the schedule planned. This comes yeah. out every Friday. Fair enough. So, uh, but I don't hate the idea, but I, we're going to put it all out at once. Um, but, yeah, I think this went well. I've learned a lot from this. This was kind of the point. Mm -hmm. So I do want to thank you for coming and doing this. Not Interviewing me is probably... Mm -hmm. Not what you expected to do today, but I'm I didn't expect down. to do this either when I woke up, so. I'm trying to think of what I'm going to do now when I leave. Probably going to go home, play Tales of Exilia. Well, let me know, guys, in the comments below if you made it this far. If you like this format, the questions I was asked are the basic questions that are going to be asked to other guests. So do you like these kind of questions, or what kind of questions would you want me to ask other people? So... I know this one was weird because you already know who we are probably. Yeah. But in the future, you won't know. What do you want to know about somebody who's done other cool things that aren't convention reviews? They've made cosplay. They have their own channel. They, mm -hmm. I really, I put this down there as like a stretch goal. I'm not a Kickstarter, but as like I would love to get some a con chair. As somebody a, who runs a con. As a fan, I'd like to see like voice actors on there. Maybe someday. I didn't even have that planned. As a, that's as a fan, you know, coming from myself. Yeah. Um, but as we got to start somewhere though. Maybe yeah. it's season two. Season two. <laughs> no, this is really a seasonal show though. I don't yeah. know if I told you that. I figured it would be. Yeah, probably be like twenty episodes, and then I'll take a break. Take a break. Figure, get guests lined up. Yeah, dates. yeah, yeah. Because well, a lot of these are going to be recorded before this. This doesn't. This isn't going to go live for like four more weeks. Okay. It's going to be after Anime Midwest when this goes live. So. Okay. But yeah, here, give me the laptop back. Let, right. let me read the outro. Okay. Oh shoot. Sorry if I was squeaking the chair. I'm sitting in a chair and it's kind of squeaky. All right, I guess it's not a long outro. <laughs> uh, well, do you have any final thoughts? Did you in, do you think you would enjoy listening to something like this, or do you think people would? Me, I I would. I I love. I like hearing the backstory of different people that I'm interested in. Uh, like with Rhett and with Ear Biscuits. Ear Biscuits. If which it's is, I'm gonna be honest, massive inspiration for the show. Mm -hmm. I don't want to lie about. I didn't. I don't listen. I never listen to every single one of them because they're just YouTubers. I don't care. Like the like the tutorial. Things not that those are bad, but that's just not my speed. Like the makeup tutorial ones. I listen to all of them. See, I, 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 I found that I can't get into it if I don't if I'm not familiar with the person's work. And that's what I'm afraid of. I'm hoping that people are gonna. I'm really hoping you guys but, will give this a chance. But there's uh, also an audience for every single person that you get. Yeah, there is. But I'm just hoping, really, guys, please, 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 give these people a chance because I'm vetting them myself. You know what I mean? They're not coming to me and being like, "Let me be on your podcast, bruh," mm -hmm. and then I don't think they're interesting i'm asking these people personally because i think you would like to hear them so please at least give them a chance and if like 10 minutes into the podcast you're and like, don't no. just look at don't just look at the time length of the video and be like nope yeah please put give it on podcast the background a noise this is there's no video to this yeah on purpose it is meant to be just listen. listened to while you're doing something else while you're driving while you're working while you're in the house cleaning you know put it on as background noise you said this was going to be on itunes eventually eventually once i get 10 episodes in okay so that's the plan uh but you, thank you guys so much yeah, i'm glad you guys hopefully enjoyed it uh here, i'm just gonna read the outro i wrote down it's not very long thank you guys so much for listening this week if you enjoy this don't forget to like comment and subscribe and 
I will see you next week with another awesome person. Remember to point it up, guys.